Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's an exciting session we have today uh, with Pfizer on their apprenticeship scheme as part of Career Maps National Apprenticeship Week. Hello, uh, Sasha and Tim. Uh, they will be joining us today and presenting and telling you all their opportunities that they've got available. Before we start, though, I just thought I'd do a little bit of housekeeping. We have on your right, you will see a chat box there. So feel free throughout the session to be putting all your questions in because following the presentation, there will be a live Q&A where we'll try to get through as many of them as we can. There's been a huge number of you on here already, so we'll do our very best. Um, and so without further ado, I think it's best if we get started. Oh, and do you want to give a little wave there, Chloe? Chloe's also joining us as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so enjoy the session. Don't forget to put your questions. And one final thing, this session is being recorded. I'll put the link in the box, but you can watch it again on careermaplive.co.uk forward slash careermap, careermap live. Uh, you can watch the whole thing again um, and share it as well. But for now, sit back and enjoy. And I'll hand over to the team at Pfizer. I'll see you at the Q&A later. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sharon, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, happy National Apprenticeship Week. Um, so in this session today, we're going to talk to you about our Pfizer Apprenticeship Scheme. But before I get started, let me introduce myself and allow the team to introduce themselves too. My name is Sasha Choker. I am the Early Careers Recruitment Manager here at Pfizer, and my responsibility here is heading up the Apprenticeship Scheme. So working with our line managers to build our early career strategy um, and work on those roles and those apprenticeships that we can then offer to you. Um, but I don't do this all alone. Um, I have uh, Tim who works very closely with me on the programme, so I'll hand over to Tim to introduce himself. Super. Thank you, Sasha. So welcome, everyone. Uh, my name's uh, Tim Mahoney, uh, and I actually work for Cogent Skills, who you will find out a little bit uh, later on in the presentation. But um, my role as account manager is threefold. Uh, firstly, it's to support the apprentices and Pfizer uh, collaboratively, throughout the delivery of the apprenticeship program. Um, it's also to engage and work with training providers in the setup, monitoring and delivery and progression of the apprenticeship programs. And lastly, it's I'm also the lead point of contact for all matters, including the resolution of any issues that may arise. Okay, I'll hand you over to Chloe. Hello everyone, I'm Chloe White. Um, I work at the Sandwich Pfizer site and I am a lab scientist apprentice in my third year and I go to University of Greenwich doing a chemistry degree one day a week. Great, thank you very much Chloe and we also have Elise who's joined us as well. Hi yeah, uh, yeah I'm Elise, I am in my second year of a two year level six course for marketing management um, so I work at the Water Oaks site which is the, the UK head office um, yeah and doing doing marketing. Fantastic, thank you very much. So let's get started with our presentation. So on the agenda today, um, we are going to probably give you a bit more of an insight into who Pfizer are, although you've probably heard lots about us in the news already. We'll then go on to talk about the Pfizer and Cogent relationship, um, and Tim will uh, present to you who Cogent are. Um, and then we'll give you some tips um, on the application process. Um, and within that, why would you want to work for Pfizer? We'll then go into some more detail about our current vacancies and then you'll hear from our fantastic apprentices themselves about their apprenticeship journey so far. So our purpose, here at Pfizer our purpose are, is breakthroughs that change patients' lives. I've got a video here for you to give you a bit more information about our purpose here.
So hopefully that's given you an insight into who FISER are and what our purpose here is. So FISER in the UK have five sites. Um, our apprenticeship programmes will be based out of two of our sites, which are Sandwich, which is predominantly a home for our science apprenticeships, and then Walton Oaks as well. Uh, Walton Oaks will also host our finance, project management, ma uh, marketing apprenticeships as well. So I'll hand over to Tim, who's going to talk to you about cogent skills. Thank you, Sasha. So um, for those of you that aren't aware, cogent skills um, really get involved in, in a number of issues uh, solely within the science sector. And we're very much a skills and talent partner for science industry companies. Um, we, we are a registered charity and, and a not-for-profit organisation. And, and we are specialists in the pharmaceutical, nuclear, bio, processing, chemical industry employers. We are specialists. All our products and services are designed uh, with science industry employers. We only actually work within the science sector um, and we have um, helped develop over 20 new science-based apprenticeship standards uh, in the last five years. We're fully registered, so we do have a small training arm to our business and that training arm is on the register of apprenticeship training providers. We're also on the register of apprenticeship training agencies. And so for those of you that aren't aware, an apprenticeship training agency is an organisation that recruits employees and arranges training for apprentices on behalf of employers. So for the purpose of this uh, apprenticeship, actually we would be your legal employer and Pfizer acts as the host employer. Okay, Sasha. So the application process. So one of the things that we do on behalf of Pfizer is to actually um, coordinate the whole application process. So for any of the vacancies that you see uh, later today, they can be found on that website. Um, if you haven't seen that website before and you're only familiar with the government uh, apprenticeship website, that's fine because we also advertise on that government website as well. And if you were to click on any of those vacancies in that government website, you will be brought uh, to this page, which is apprenticeships and graduates co.uk vacancies Pfizer. So in order to apply for, for the process we have a very simple four-step application process. So the first bit is obviously you have to apply online. So for all our vacancies you will need to submit an application form. This is a Word document you need to download and fill in and then upload it against the job. We would recommend you keep a copy saved to your computer so that you can continue to update like you would a CV. Now the form will ask you to fill in um, a number of different sections, such as what are your main strengths? What skills would you like to improve during this apprenticeship? What are your hobbies and interests? What do you consider to be your biggest achievement? And you'll also need to list all your qualifications and work experience. Now, if you're still studying, you can put down your predicted grades, and we would also recommend that you list any qualifications you started but may not have finished. Also ensure that you put down any work experience that you may have completed as well, because it's always good for employers to see what level of experience you have. Now, finally, the form will ask you to write two employer questions that are particular to that role you're applying for. So it's really important that you answer those questions. And the questions, these two employer questions, can be found in the job advert. These questions are key, and it's a great opportunity to show how you're interested in the role and for you to explain why you think you will be a great fit for Pfizer. Once you've completed the first part, the second part then is profile matching. Essentially, it's screening, and it's broken down into two parts. So the first part is the application screening, and essentially, what the recruitment consultant does is they check whether you meet the basic elig eligibility requirements. So you'll see on some of the vacancies later that they may request A-levels or GCSEs, and it's really important uh, that you meet those eligibility requirements. The other part of the uh, application that the uh, recruitment consultant is looking at is have you answered those two questions? Assuming you meet the eligibility requirements and you answer those two questions, 
then you'll go through to the next part of the screening, which is called the candidate screening. Essentially, that's a telephone conversation with, again, one of these uh, recruitment consultants. And they're really going to be asking you, why are you interested in the position? They may also carry out a, a little information, advice and guidance session, and also just talk to you a little bit more about where you see your career. Assuming um, that goes well, then the next stage is the anytime video interview. So what is a one-way video interview? Well, it's a, a one-way video interview is a great way for you to complete an interview at a time that is convenient for you. We pre-record the interview questions and you record a video of your answers to each question. We partner with a company called SparkHire to enable us to do this. So how it works is you will receive an invite from them to complete the interview and be given a deadline by which you will need to complete it. When you log in to complete your interview, you will see a demonstration video on how the system works. Then, after following the on-screen instructions that checks your computer setup, you are then ready to record your video. Now, the benefit of this is that you can complete the interview at any time, day or night. You can even record yourself using your phone. So whilst this is a much more convenient method than a face-to-face -face interview, it's important that you treat it as the same as if you were having an interview in person. These interviews are then shared with the hiring manager at Pfizer alongside your application. And a final decision is then made as to whether you are shortlisted for the final part in the process, which is the face-to-face -face interview. So what's the face-to-face -face interviews? Well, obviously at the moment, it's actually a virtual face-to-face -face meeting. All our interviews at the moment are being carried out via WebEx and the actual interview format will vary depending on the nature of the apprenticeship position. But typically, most interviews will involve a presentation and a behavioural based interview. OK, Sasha, over to you. Thanks, Tim. So Tim's talked you through the application process. I'm going to give you some hints and tips on how your application can be successful here at Pfizer. So really demonstrating your interest in the role. And I'm going to give you a real hot tip here. Um, if you can and you can find the apprenticeship standard, research it. So all our apprenticeship standards will be listed on the uh, Cogent page. So do research the apprenticeship standard be before putting in your application. Um, and what, whilst doing your application, um, make sure you do also read the two questions um, properly and answer them as requested. So make sure you take time out to really demonstrate your interest in the role. Research us, uh, pfizer.co.uk slash apprenticeships, and I can pop that link for you in the chat. Um, we also have our social media handles as well, where we put various bits of information over National Apprenticeship Week. Um, so do have a look at our social media handles and also our YouTube pages as well. Keep it current and concise. So when you are talking about your, uh, your achievements and your qualities, make sure that you are relating it back to the role that you are applying for. Find a niche. Why would you want to work for Pfizer? Um, and also put that in your application, whether it's your form, your video interview, or even the conversation that you may have if successful um, at the virtual interview. And also show your passion and enthusiasm. Why do you want to work for Pfizer? Why are you interested in the industry? Talk about your motivations and what do you hope to achieve from the apprenticeship? And last but not least, don't forget the closing date. So the 10th of March is when a majority of our applications will be closing. So please do ensure you allow yourself plenty of time to put your application in. So here at Pfizer, we like to ensure that we're giving additional support to our apprentices. And some of our apprentices may not be located close to our Walton Oak site or our sandwich site. So we can provide assistance and that's where we allow our successful candidates to buddy up with other individuals, whether that's undergraduates who've been successful in our early career programs or our apprentices, to come together into a group and explore different opportunities for housing. Um, so if you are successful um, on an apprenticeship um, and you are looking at relocating, we can add you into our Facebook group where you can have conversations and find potential housemates if you are looking to relocate to the area. Skills Workshop, and this is a very exciting initiative that we've kick-started this year. 
we understand that, you know, as an apprentice, you're very early on in your careers and you may be undertaking skills as part of your apprenticeship. But we want to provide you with more skills, essentially a skills uh, work tool bag that you can take with you throughout. So whether that's learning how to network effectively or um, effective communication or self-leadership. We are putting on sessions for all our apprentices um, to ensure that they're developing key skills, not only for their apprenticeship, but for their future careers as well. Volunteering days. So our apprentices and our Pfizer colleagues have five days that they can use towards volunteering. So some of the recent activities that our uh, colleagues have been involved in have been helping at our COVID centres, or my favourite and I've signed up for is helping an LG person get comfortable with technology to avoid any loneliness that's happening in the current pandemic. And then last but not least, the apprenticeship, apprenticeship network. So this is an opportunity for our apprentices to come together, to stay connected, collaborate and suggest new ideas. The apprenticeship network is crucial for us to develop a bond with our apprentices and for us to help drive best practice and increase the quality of our schemes. This is a network for all our apprentices across our Pfizer sites to come together to discuss matters relating to apprenticeships, arrange events, or drive communication, or really just you know sit and have a chat virtually with their colleagues. This is a network by apprentices for apprentices. So now we're going to go on and talk about our current vacancies that we have here at Pfizer. So, our first apprenticeship um, and one of our popular apprenticeship standards where we have around 18 apprentices currently on programme is the laboratory scientist. So working within the innovative parental product development department, the lab scientist apprenticeship will carry out routine and complex scientific experiments and perform a variety of technical and operational support functions across the organisation that may directly impact the re research and development of new products taking responsibility for the quality and accuracy of the work undertaken. This particular apprenticeship is based in at our sandwich site um, and they will study, the six, successful candidate will study um, with Greenwich University on a day release. So in the current situation, our apprentices are studying virtually. Um, there is a, a requirement to have uh, 112 UCAS points or equivalent, including chemistry at grade C or 4 or above plus uh, an additional science or math qualification. The closing date for the apprenticeship will be the 10th of March with a start date of the 30th of August. Super. Um, so as you can see, we have another uh, laboratory scientist position, this time in the material characterization team. And obviously it's similar uh, to, to previous one that uh, Sasha mentioned. Um, just to point out, it, it is a five year program um, and the degree that you're studying towards is a BSc in pharmaceutical science. And again, just, just to reinforce the message, it is the same type of degree that you, you would achieve as if you were a, a normal full time university student. As with all the other positions you'll see today, it's worth remembering the closing date is the 10th of March. Thank you, Sasha. Thanks, Tim. And actually, Chloe's going to, she's currently a lab scientist, so Chloe can probably bring to light more about the apprenticeship um, and her experience as well. So I'll hand over to Chloe later on who can talk about that. So our next apprenticeship that we are recruiting for is the Associate Project Manager Apprenticeship. This is based within our regulatory organisation that spans over 10 Pfizer offices in more than seven time zones. Each year, the group supports approximately 32,000 submissions to 175 countries around the world within both established and emerging markets. The group operates in a dynamic business environment and is a key contributor in ensuring quality dossiers are submitted on time to health authorities for the Pfizer portfolio. This apprenticeship is based within uh, at our sandwich site um, and will be delivered by BPP University. So a mixed delivery of online lecture, lectures, skills webinars and workshops. The uh, minimum requirement for this particular apprenticeship is A-levels equaling a minimum of 80 UCAS points or equivalent. Okay, uh, the next one is a uh, business administrator. So this apprenticeship is actually offered at level three, 
Uh, so that means that's an advanced apprenticeship. And the job role really is about providing a professional administrative service to the global operations, engineering and lab support team. So we, we work with a local training provider, Kent Training and Apprenticeships, and it is a mixed delivery. So you will be required to attend workshops. Um, you'll also have support from a dedicated uh, careers coach, and you'll also be working on compiling a portfolio of evidence. Entry requirements is five GCSEs um, at grade C, stroke four or equivalent or above, um, and you do need to have your maths and English at GCSE level for that. Okay, Sasha. Thanks very much, Tim. The next apprenticeship is our marketing manager apprenticeship. The marketing manager apprenticeship will support new and established projects which deliver and maximise revenue targets for inline portfolio through patient retention on new patient recruitment. This particular apprenticeship is based in our biopharmaceuticals group, so the rare disease group, out of our Walton Oak site. The training provider for this apprenticeship is Cambridge Marketing College and again a mixture of online lectures, skills webinars and face-to-face -face workshops or in the current situation um, online workshops. So um, if you do hold a degree unfortunately in marketing you will not be um, able to apply for this apprenticeship but if you have eight UCAS points from a minimum of two A-level subjects or equivalent or another marketing or relevant business management qualification that will be preferred. Again, Elise will talk to you more about her, uh, her apprenticeship as she is currently a marketing manager apprentice in this space. Over to you, Tim. Okay. So this is the first time we've ever been able to offer this uh, apprenticeship standard, which is the junior validation engineer. So we're really excited about um, drumming this one up. Okay, so the uh, training provider for this is Manufacturing Technology Centre, and they're actually based in Oxford. So the delivery method for this is actually a block release. So you'll be attending our site um, one week every eight weeks. Um, in order to apply, you do need to have done either a level three engineering apprenticeship uh, beforehand, or you need to have been working towards a level three engineering BTEC qualification and you're also going to need at least three years worth of work experience on top of that. The reason for that is that this is a level four apprenticeship. So it's uh, the equivalent of an HNC. And this apprenticeship will allow you the opportunity to build upon the skills and knowledge and behaviours that you would have acquired in your level three apprenticeship and apply them into a level four. It's based down in Sandwich in Kent. And, and as I say, I'm really hoping that we'll get lots of applicants for this one. Thank you, Sasha. Thanks, Tim. So our last apprenticeship um, that we have listed is the Accounting Professional Apprenticeship. So this, this particular apprenticeship is a financial role working towards responsibility for creating and verifying financial information to support decision making across commercial operations within a pharmaceutical organisation. So this particular apprenticeship will be based out of Walton Oaks um, in the decision support team. The training provider will be Kaplan and again, mixed delivery of online workshops and face-to-face uh, -face contact, but at the moment will all be online. Um, there are also uh, the entry requirements, which is five GCSEs at grade C or four above and must include uh, English and maths. We do also work with our line managers um, and stakeholders in the business and are constantly providing new opportunities. Um, and we may also uh, have new opportunities listed that aren't here. So please do keep an eye on our uh, careers page where there could be uh, more opportunities available. Um, and in particular, we, we are looking at a data apprenticeship, um, which will be up, available in the upcoming weeks, um, and an additional lab scientist apprenticeship as well. So I will now hand over to our fantastic apprentices. Um, so first we have Elise is going to talk to you about her marketing manager experience as an apprentice. So over to you, Elise. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, before I go into any detail about my role, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of background about myself and how I kind of um, came to be in this job and, and my past experience. So next slide, please, Sasha. So um, I actually joined Pfizer straight after my A-levels. Um, it's worth mentioning that I had no previous marketing experience. I, I didn't do business at A-level or anything like that. 
I actually did um, more science based A levels. So I did um, psychology, biology, and also French, which is slightly unrelated. But um, I I had planned to go on to university um, and I was actually planning to do a psychology with neuroscience degree, um, mainly just because I enjoyed it at A level. Um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do afterwards and it was kind of just the the done thing. It was either you, you leave and go to work or you go to university and, and work out what you want to do at university. So at school I, I found that there was quite a lack of awareness around apprenticeships and in particular degree apprenticeships. I, to be honest, was completely unaware that you could gain a degree whilst working full time as well. So um, I found I found the Pfizer apprenticeship and to be honest, it sounded like my absolute dream job. So I wanted to go for it and it was the best decision I ever made. Um, as well as the job role being completely suited to me, as, as you'll see in a minute and um, when I go into a little bit more detail around what I do day to day. Some of the key things that I think have really stood out to me over the past year and a half that I've been working for Pfizer are... Um, there, there's a really good work to social balance. Um, we've obviously been working from home for a little while now, but um, there's when we were in the office, there's lots of other undergraduates, lots of um, apprentices, lots of graduates. So you're not alone in in how old you are. There's there's lots of other people the same age as you, and everyone's super supportive, which is something that can't be underestimated because everyone's in the same situation as you. Um, obviously your university course is completely funded while you're gaining a full-time salary because you're working full-time, which has been absolutely amazing. And I just didn't realize that it was, it was something that was out there to be honest. Next slide, please. So I've tried to, list my role into into three areas which was really tough because my my job role is really diverse um as sasha mentioned i'm a marketing manager um working at water notes which is the the commercial head office so um i've grouped my job role into three main areas um so we've got digital marketing brand management and uh, materials development so when I say digital marketing, some of the main things that I've done over the last year and a half have included um, developing apps, um, creating websites, um, building everything to go on the website and, and launching them, um, social media campaigns through various different channels. We've, we've had uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, um, email campaigns, both to healthcare professionals. Um, I'm, I'm also working on a patient email campaign at the moment as well and webinar creation. So working with um, doctors, nurses, filming them and then putting them up on, on the websites that I've been working on. Um, brand management, um, this is the area that I have feel like I've developed the most in because I just had no experience coming into it and I've, I've just been really supported in this area specifically. So um, forecasting, sales analysis, uh, stock management. So looking at our past sales and, and working out how much of the product we need to make in the factory to keep up with demand. Um, launch brand pre preparation for um, a new product that's actually launching in 2022 and various market research projects. Um, materials development as well is probably quite a large part of my job. So this is developing um, things like uh, posters, banners, leaflets, um, conference stands for when, for when you're traveling to different conferences, um, materials for healthcare professionals to either use for themselves or, or hand out to their patients, um, and also materials for our sales team. So they need, they need the relevant materials to go out and, and sell the product to various healthcare professionals across the country. So that, that's our job to make sure that they're, they're equipped with, with the best materials that they can um and also patient home care management so um at the moment we we have various home care schemes for different products um so we need to oversee that and ensure that the patients are getting the best care possible so i would say my job is is very diverse i'm still learning new stuff every day and i was also really shocked at the responsibility that i've been given as well um, which has really made a difference and really helped in my, develop my development over the last year and a half. Um, 
which has been great and and obviously my studying alongside that so yeah best decision I ever made probably Fantastic. Thank you very much for giving us an insight into your apprenticeship programme um, and you're working on some fantastic opportunities there. So again, thank you for sharing with our students. Let me hand over to Chloe next. Um, so Chloe will talk to you about her experience as a lab scientist apprentice. So over to you, Chloe. OK, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I found myself where I am. Firstly, so just a little bit about who I am. I'm in my third year studying a chemistry bachelor's at the University of Greenwich, which I do one day a week. Um, and then the rest of the time I work in chemical research and development at the Sandwich Pfizer site. I actually started in September 2017. Um, and so that must mean that I applied four years ago um, before Pfizer. Uh, so coming into it, I had uh, three A levels, chemistry, biology and maths and an AS in physics. Uh, I had no lab experience outside of like what you do as a standard at, at school for A levels and GCSE. Um, so obviously, I knew that I from that that I enjoyed it, but I didn't know necessarily what I wanted to do with that. Um, other than the fact that I enjoyed the subjects that I was doing, um, I didn't really really want to go to university, um, which is why the apprenticeship has been so good for me. Um, I didn't really like the sort of classroom style uh, learning at school. It wasn't wasn't something that I wanted to do anymore. And I didn't I just thought the university was the only way that I could uh, move forward with my my career. But um, by chance, actually, uh, when I was at school, we were doing some something that we had to do for um, applying for university, looking at, at courses that would work for us. And actually, by coincidence, it came up that the apprenticeships existed. Um, so I, I went home and I spoke to my mum about it and we found Pfizer on the government website and just I applied on a whim. I didn't I didn't necessarily think that I would get anywhere with it, but it's it's been absolutely amazing where I've managed to get. Um, so coming into it, not knowing much about it, I didn't really have much in the way of expectations. Um, I expected to be more assisting people, not necessarily taking much responsibility over anything, just doing what was asked of me. Um, like basic things, maybe maybe weighing things and and preparing lots of samples and things like that. Um, but that's entirely not what it's been. I have a responsibility over a project myself. Um, I have lots of support from people around me. So my manager, if I need anything, if I don't know where to go, then he's always very supportive and, and suggests things if I ask. But having the responsibility over something has been really great for me. Um, it's helped me develop a little bit of confidence in my own abilities and my own science um so yeah we do i have independent work on my own experiments i decide what i'm going to do to achieve what i need to achieve um that's completely up to me um and yeah there's there's so much variety in what i do it's not there really is no i expected there to be a lot of repetition but there really isn't any it's it's very different day to day um doing different experiments, finding things out, writing writing experiments up, doing research. So yeah, it's, it's a very exciting role. So this is just a little bit about the uh, different different positions that someone that's a laboratory scientist could, um, could be in. So I know that we've got a position in materials characterization team, I believe. Um, so that is a group that um, they look at defects in, in products. So, for example, if you have a tablet that's got some discoloration or something, they will look at, at why that is. So a lot of problem solving, uh, looking at things under a microscope, um, so forensic analysis. Um, then we've also got uh, the drug product development team. So they take something, they take the active ingredient, um, that actually has the, the therapeutic effect and they look at how they can make it into something like a tablet or um, or an oral solution or a capsule. Um, so there's there's lots of things that go into that. So you've got to measure the properties of the solid, um, develop the, the tablet in the first place. There's a lot of, of computational modelling, which I find very interesting that goes into that. 
There's also analytical research and development, which is uh, looking at the stability of, of a drug, um, developing the methods for, for analyzing a drug. Uh, they, they get involved in uh, when material is released for um, clinical studies. So they've got to analyze that to check that it's safe to release. Um, and then there's a department that I work in, which is chemical research and development. Um, it's a very, very broad department, um, probably what I know most about. Um, so we do lots of different things. It's developing the chemical route of how you start off with your reactants and then you get the drug that has the therapeutic effect. Um, so we do lots of safety testing so that we you know if you add A and B, it's not going to explode. Um, process design, process optimization, so we make, it, make sure it's very uh, efficient. Um, and yeah, some technology development, different different ways that you can make things work. So very exciting, very varied. Um, so there, yeah, this is just a little bit about uh, some of the benefits that I found um, of my apprenticeship. Um, you you build your theoretical knowledge alongside your um, your working. So. You, you learn things at university and then you can apply it in the workplace, which I found really useful. Um, I've found that an important thing that, that I've needed to build on is, is communication. I'm, I'm not the best at presenting. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't all that great with uh, written communication, but this has definitely helped me build on that, which is a very valuable skill to have when you're applying for any sort of job. So that's, that's definitely helped. It's a good thing to put on your CV. Um, Building confidence definitely because you have to, um, you know, you make your own ideas. So uh, and yeah, it it definitely is is a great thing to build on. Um, yeah, uh, so some of the these these things at the top of the slide are actually other additional things that I've done alongside this apprenticeship that that has been facilitated by the apprenticeship. So last wouldn't have been last year, two years ago now, actually. Um, I, we did a trip to the Lake District uh, and did some some team building with other apprentices. And it was really great. It was it was hiking and, and other like physical activities like raft building it was it was a really exciting thing. That I think they they intend to continue running for science apprentices um, at the sandwich site. I've also been to some um, seminars and things uh, for the, with the Royal Society of Chemistry. And last year, I got an East Kent Apprenticeship Award uh, in STEM. So that was it was a great recognition of uh, the effort that I put in. I was very much appreciated, but it's, it's always recognised and it's always lovely to get something like that. Um, so aside from all of these positive things I've listed off, just some considerations which I think are worth mentioning. Um, after saying that this apprenticeship is the best thing that I've done, just some considerations for people to think about before they go and apply. Um, this degree that I'm doing is exactly equivalent to a chemistry degree if you were to go to university full time and do it, but it takes five years rather than three. So that's a consideration if, you, if you're worried about that. Personally, I wasn't. Um, you miss out on the university experience, which is way more important to some people than it is others. I wasn't worried about going to university and doing the whole like living away from home with a group of students and, and going out. So that wasn't important to me. But and that's not to say that I can't we can't socialize because we definitely can and we have uh, great social events, but it's just a little bit different. Um, and yeah, th this it's it's very busy. It, well, it can be very busy, um, which is not a bad thing, um, but it takes it takes some good time management, I think, which is a good thing to build on anyway, but it's something you have to consider. You have to be able to manage uh, several different things at, at once because you've obviously got your degree alongside your job. So that's just something important to consider. But I've always had a lot of support and I I, I can't recommend apprenticeships enough if, if that's what you think that you want to do. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Chloe. Um, and thank you for going through your experiences um, and the advantages um, of your apprenticeship so far. 
So we have another video for you, um, which is a roundup of our early careers programs here at Pfizer. So let me share that with you now. What gets me out of bed in the morning is being able to go into work and just knowing that gradually, step by step, I'm doing real chemistry. I'm very much being given current projects. I'm helping develop the drugs that they are currently working on. And the whole thing is just a really good way of getting that early experience before you go out into the world. So at Pfizer, they're really interested and invested in your work-life balance. Only 45 minute meetings, no longer than an hour, got a gym on site. It makes you feel as an employee a bit more thought about. They're actually invested in your well-being. Managing to get to an apprenticeship and actually having uni on the side for free is a ridiculous deal. <laughs> it's perfect. What really makes me tick is new ideas, really getting involved in innovation, new things, developing new technologies and getting on the cutting edge of science. I joined Pfizer as an undergraduate, completed my undergraduate year. I had a lot of support and encouragement from my bosses who were very keen for me to apply for the graduate scheme. I'll be honest, I had such a fantastic year in that third year. All I could think about was coming back to Pfizer. I think within Pfizer, everybody gives opportunities to speak to other people, to gain more knowledge, learn what other people are doing. Everyone is so friendly. It makes you a more confident person that will be able to go and feel confident to speak to senior leaders. That's really important going into a new job as well. So when I was finally offered a permanent role with Pfizer, I did shed a tear. When uh, that contract offer came through, emotional moment to think that you've come through all the schemes, all the training, all the years of university education to finally be offered a contract in such a brilliant company on a permanent basis. I feel like Pfizer are very supportive of me and my team want me to do well and they will me to do well. If I do need time where I've got an exam coming up, and maybe I need an extra study day or I need an hour extra to look over my studies, I will get that. I am currently a lead business administrator with Pfizer and I just completed my level four apprenticeship in business administration. We're quite lucky in the fact that we're given five volunteering days a year, so we can almost give back a bit by going out to schools and saying, look, this is what we've done. This is how we've got here. Maybe you should consider it too. So I'm actually buddied up with Ryan, whose marketing role in his last year is actually the role that I'm doing now. So it's quite a nice relationship because I can go to him, ask him about things he would have dealt with in his first year. It's someone that you can talk to and they've been there and done it. Colleagues reinforce your abilities and tell you when you do a good job. Little things like that have really helped me feel like I've become one of the best versions of me that I could be. The university isn't right for everyone. It wasn't right for me. The apprenticeship was. And I've done well for two years so by going onto a graduate scheme like we've got at Pfizer you're going to be exposed to key elements of a business very early on you can go back to uni knowing where you want to get to by the time that you finish there the best part of my job is the fact that I get to meet so many different people it's about inspiring the next generation of scientists of mathematicians of engineers of people like me who want to come and help to create those medicines that will then help the patients So I do hope that you're feeling inspired by listening to both of our apprentices here today, Elise and Chloe, about their apprenticeship journeys and also some of our apprentices in the video there as well. Here at Pfizer, we're very invested in our apprentices and we'd love to offer opportunities um, to help develop, grow and build our future of to have apprentice, um, apprentices in the, view, in the business. So if you want to know more about Pfizer, please do visit us whether it's on our Pfizer.co.uk page, and I've also put the link to our apprenticeship page as well, or our various different social media pages, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and also you can find our videos that we've used today um, on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you again, everybody, for listening um, and attending our presentation. Um, if you do have any further questions, um, I know we've got some time for questions now, but if there's anything that you do think of um, maybe in an hour's time or once you've revisited the, the session again, please do email us at studentprogramsukatvisor.com. Thank you very much.
Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, all your fabulously interesting questions. We'll do our very best to get through as many as we can. Um, but I will have to tell you there's an awful lot and not an awful lot of time. But as you can see, if we don't get to your questions, there's a link here that you can see for an email that you can send those questions off. Uh, I've tried to group the questions together as well so that we can kind of cover themes as a whole. Um, so if we start from the uh, sort of practical side of things, we were asked um, when are Pfizer apprenticeships live, as it were, and when's the best time to apply? Absolutely, and I can answer that question. So our Pfizer apprenticeship vacancies are currently live at the moment, um, and I can pop the link to that um, in the chat. Um, they will be closing on the 30th, sorry, on the 10th of March, um, where you uh, we, we encourage you to please put your application in beforehand. We do also have other opportunities that aren't currently on our website at the moment and may become live in the upcoming week. So we do also encourage you to keep an eye on, on our apprenticeship page um, for other vacancies that may also come up as well. Uh, we were asked a couple of these together. One was, um, how many applicants on average do you have a year? Where are the apprenticeships based and how much do you get paid? Yep, of course. So I'll give the application question over to Tim, because you probably don't want to hear me talking lots. Um, so Tim, if you want to answer the application question, please. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on, on, on the nature of the job role, really. So so for lab scientist position, uh, we tend to get anywhere between, you know, 50 and 80 applications. Whereas, unfortunately, on the engineering side of things, you know, we're lucky if we get like 10 or 15. So, so as I say, it really does vary um depending on the job role depending on the level of the apprenticeship program and obviously where it's based for, for some reason um jobs that are based at Walton Oaks tend to get a few more people applying than the ones based down in Sandwich thank you very much Tim and the salaries for our apprenticeships will be listed against each of the uh, vacancies so I have popped the link um to the uh, the uh, Pfizer page um so that is www pfizer.co.uk slash apprentices, apprenticeship, sorry. Um, and if you go onto that web page um, and you have a look at our current vacancies, which are on the right hand side, um, each of the role will have the salaries listed there. Uh, Dan wants to know, can you apply for an apprenticeship if you already have a degree? Uh, it depends which apprenticeship you are applying for. Um, so we did list if you had on, a, for example, our marketing manager apprenticeship, if you have a marketing uh, degree, you would be unable to apply for the apprenticeship. However, if you have another degree, um, we would encourage you again to put your application through. And we, if you are successful, then we can communicate that to you. But um, essentially, if you have a, a similar degree to the apprenticeship that you are applying for, um, you will not be suitable as you already have the learning in place. Um, but if you are looking to study in a new area, then absolutely, we do encourage you to put your application through. Great. And I've got a few questions for Chloe and Elise. Um, I'll start with Chloe. You were asked quite specifically, uh, what was the most challenging thing? What is the most challenging thing about working uh, and doing an apprenticeship advisor? Oh, that is a good question. Um... I don't know. Um, possibly the time management side of it is it, it can be difficult at times. Um, I would much rather do my job than a degree. Um, so <laughs> sometimes I find myself procrastinating on on doing an assignment and just staying at work longer because because I would rather do that. But um, yeah, pro probably the time management side of it. I don't struggle with the the responsibility um, or anything like that. Either that or um, I'm still I'm not good at, at presenting or anything like that. So if I have to do presentations, I I tend to shy away from them. So this that's this is my uh, foray into that area, I guess. <laughs> well done, you. You're doing a fabulous job. Um, Elise, we were asked what was the most interesting marketing project that you've worked on. What was the most what? Sorry. Interesting. Oh, um. Probably the projects that I've that I've sort of carried the whole way through. I'm I'm particularly interested in the digital marketing side of it. So um, anything that involves kind of um, app development or maybe uh, d designing websites, um, 
one one project that springs to mind is the development of an app right right the way through from the beginning and then working on the launch of it all of the comms around that um we had an associated social media campaign that's actually running at the moment um so i i found that the most interesting because you're reaching the general public and trying to raise awareness of a rare disease which is the area that i work in rare diseases so it was rewarding but i also found it really fun to be creative which i get to do a lot in my job which is great great um tim poppy asks how long does uh, a level four apprenticeship take and do you get additional qualifications while you're doing your uh, apprenticeship i imagine that is different for different types spot of apprenticeships on. yeah spot on so if you're doing a level four in in finance for instance uh you will get the opportunity to work towards a professional qualification which is sema um for, if you were doing the associate project manager uh, apprenticeship um yeah you, you, you'll get to be um uh, to do the, uh, the the APM qualification, so so yeah, it really depends on on the type of apprenticeship that you're actually doing. Um, Amy's just put in the chat now, following on with the application process. She says, if we've already applied, when do we find out more information as to where we are with our application? Yep. So if you have already applied, uh, the recruitment team will be reaching out just to make sure that you're kind of still interested. Um, as I say, we we, we did. Um, didn't we, Sasha? We we started the recruitment um, a lot oh. earlier this year, just Absolutely. to try, yeah, just to try and get uh, the opportunity to get as many applicants as possible. But as I said, the recruitment team will be reaching out. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And just to add on that as well, the reason why we've kept our applications open for a lot longer this year is to give you. Um, enough time and opportunity to apply. So whether it was over, if you're at school or college or sixth form, over the Christmas break, over the half term that I'm sure you're lucky enough to have next week. Um, so um, yeah, we've just given you enough time. So you've got enough holiday break um, to apply for our vacancy. So you will be contacted very soon. Um, but if you haven't already, do put your application in um, and uh, just before our ad closing date on the 10th of March. Uh, Sarah also just asked, which follows on nicely, is do you take, uh, you mentioned school students and younger people, but she was asking, do you take older applicants? Absolutely, um, we do indeed. So um, apprentices aren't just for our school, uh, college or sixth form leavers actually apprentices are for anybody i actually am an apprenticeship i'm doing an apprenticeship myself at the moment as well um so um i left school quite a few years ago um so apprenticeships are for absolutely anybody that's interested in applying great and um this is a general question i'll let you uh um <clears throat> sasha decide who might answer it or you might all want to have a pop but Jad jack asked how do you feel about being the first company to find a vaccine Oh, we're absolutely thrilled. <laughs> um, yeah, thrilled to be able to to make breakthroughs that change patients' lives. Are any of you, um, uh, Chloe or Elise, working on it or have touched against it at all with your jobs? No, I haven't. Um, I, work, I work within rare disease, but um, we, we have regular town halls. So we're constantly updated on, you know, how many patients have had the vaccine. My my grandparents have, have all had it, which is which is amazing. Um, but yeah, it, it's just nice to be part of it. But it, it's more about getting as many people as vac vaccinated as possible with with whatever vaccines there are. So it, it's nice that we were the first, but it's also important that people are getting vaccinated. What's your feelings, Chloe? Are you pretty excited about it as well? Yeah, so I personally haven't worked on the vaccine itself. I've worked on COVID related, COVID -related things, but but not on the vaccine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting. I'm, I'm very, it's, it's a sense of pride that you get from it, I think. I think it's all very exciting and we're delighted to have you here. Um, we are running a little bit out of time now. So um, I would just like to say to everybody, uh, uh, we'll pop in the chat. If you haven't seen it already, that uh, this is being recorded and you can watch it again. It'll probably be up next week because we've had quite a busy week and it's already Friday. Hooray. Uh, but before I say my farewell, if each of you want to um, say, uh, if you've got one last word that you'd like to stay, say, uh, I'll let Sasha, you can uh, sort of start it off. 
Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, and it's a goodbye from me. Over to you, Tim. Super. Um, yeah, just if, if anyone is thinking about put, putting in an application, you know, go for it. If you're not sure, if you want further advice, as I say, we, we have got the, the recruitment team there on hand. So as I say, if you do need any additional advice, you know, reach out to them as well. But best of luck. And as I say, hopefully, hopefully we, we've inspired some of you today to apply. Thanks, Tim. Larry, you want... Go on. <laughs> yeah, so I I really hope that, that what I've managed to say is uh, given uh, a little bit of information and uh, persuaded perhaps a couple of people to apply for, for a lab scientist position. Um, it's been the best thing that I've done. So if, you, if, you're, thinking, if you're thinking about it, go for it. Um, don't, let, don't let it put you off. Um, yeah, so goodbye from me. Chloe, any last words? Sorry, Elise. Um, no, I would just I would just reflect what everyone else has said. Um, if anyone has any questions about uh, my job role, please feel free to contact me directly via LinkedIn if you if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, just just because it's might not be what other people that you know are doing, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. Brilliant. That's a really nice message to end up on, particularly during National Apprenticeship Week. Uh, one thing that's been pretty sadly clear throughout the week is that there's a lot of misconceptions about what an apprenticeship is and what it involves, um, particularly from uh, the qualification point of view and from the point of view that it is a job and you are applying for a job and you're starting your way out in life. So uh, good luck to everybody who's joined us today. I hope you find what you want to do. You've got lots of information here. And like I said, it's going to be recorded. It is recorded. It'll be available next week if you want to watch again or share it with any of your friends or family that you think might be interested. Goodbye, everyone, and have a lovely Friday afternoon. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.